Jupiter or Mars? Right. Depending on wh where you look in the sky and uh, what time of day it is, yeah. They're the, they're the three planets that you can see quite clearly. Is it, is it true that Venus is, is the brightest one, though? Um, it, 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 does, it does depend, it depend on how close you are to it at any, any time of the year or over, like we're one of the closest to Mars at the moment in, in the, than we would in, for, for about the next 20 years. Why? Okay. Mm. Which, is, which is one of the reasons why there's been about three um, launches of um, sending um, satellites and uh, rockets that have all taken off to head to Mars in the last three months, because we're at one of the closest times that we have in the next 20 years. Gosh. More recently, I noticed um, the two sort of as if they were planets or stars uh, joining together and, and this like an explosion that had occurred. Um, it was a very strange day because there were many accidents around here on that day. Could that mm. play a part? Well, they can get aligned. They I don't. It's, it's not so much. I think they're colliding or whatever. But when you when you look at them, you get one behind the other. So mm -hmm. so they're they're in alignment. So when they're in alignment, you get a much a greater gravitational pull. Yes. So it's it's so, so, and obviously and it's it, it's the gravity. It's the moons. The gravitational force of the moon that controls our tides. So our tides go in and out. You know, twice a day because of the pull of the moon. But when you start getting the other planets lining up with the moon on the other side of it, and they're, they're all in alignment, you get a much gravitational pull. So you actually start getting bigger tides and all those sorts of things as well. Yeah. So that's well, the same as a neap, a neap tide, is that? Absolutely, yeah. You get springs and neaps according to, to how, how the gravitational pull of the, uh, the moon is, where, where the yeah. position of the moon is and how it's aligned with the sun and so on. Yeah. Mm. Amazing. Yes, because on that day we were travelling and we were going to um, Derriford Hospital um, and there was an accident en route. Thankfully mm. we managed to detour. Um, and then when we got to Derriford Hospital, we heard about another accident that had occurred near Totnes on the main road. Um, and during that very short space of time, they airlifted the individual and uh, landed at Derriford, right in front of us, so to speak. So that was quite amazing, the speed yeah. of light that, and air. Is that, is that Audrey that's just joined us? Sorry to yes, sorry I'm late. No problem, I'll just rename you. I just... Well, that's great, thank you. Oh. <laughs> I was just say, starting to, uh, typing to Audrey saying, what's your name? Mm. <laughs> oh, hello. Hey Aggie down there. Uh, oh, I, uh, yes, hello. I haven't seen you for a while since uh, I think we met up in Budley about uh, three years ago, didn't we? I have. Oh, okay. Uh, on our on one of our projects in Budley, Salton, perhaps. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was uh, doing some consultation for children and young people engagement activities. That's right. Yeah, and I, 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 I was the chairman of the uh, the patient participation group. So. Oh yes, I remember that. Nice to meet you, Mark. <laughs> such, a, such a nice surprise. <laughs> so, did you know that I was I will be running I, I'm running this group when when your colleague told you about I didn't know that you were until I saw your name on, on there. So. I see. Yeah. yeah, it's great. Great surprise. Good to see you again, Aggie. And yes, and good to see you too, Mark. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you very um, much. Um, I've got uh, I've got my daughter in the background of my room, so if you hear some Peppa Pig, please excuse her. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, Harry will enjoy that. It's about yeah, it's your, about, it's about it's about your level, level, isn't it, Harry? I yeah. could do with a bit of kids' TV today, to be honest. <laughs> oh, yeah. It'd be lovely. Right. Uh, it's just it, like it, over there. It, 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 oh it, yes, yes. You know yeah. how many how, how, many, how many of you all remember Watch with Mother? That was about this time, yes. wasn't it? Yeah. All yes, yes. Do you all remember Watch With Mother? It was about yeah. one o'clock in the afternoon. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Bill and Ben. Yeah, let, uh, actually, let's, let's, go round, let's go round the room then. What, what was your favourite Watch With Mother programme? Bill and Ben? Bill and Ben. Who can remember any others? Flower Pot Men. Wooden Tops. The Wooden Tops. Yeah. The Wooden Tops yeah. were mine. Yeah. They were my favourite. Yeah. Do you remember there was Trumpton, wasn't there? Yeah. Camberwick Green. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Um, tale, Tales oh, of the Riverbank. Andy Pandy. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Andy Pandy. Andy. Yeah. Andy. Remember tale, Tales of the Riverbank? Yeah. 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 I need to learn these things. I need to learn what my about, lesson. There was one about I, a I think on ITV there was one called Twizzle. I'm sure it was called Twizzle. There was yeah. one where a girl's, a, it was a girl and her arms used to grow. That's and right. I think her name yeah. was Twizzle. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. God, could have misspent you. Yeah. No and then, wonder I'm like I am with a one. Woman. It wasn't a donkey, it was Muffin the Mule. Yeah. yeah. And then later, and, and then, and then when the, when the children came yeah. home from school, they're they not, could either watch Jack and Ori or play school, wasn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. next week. Yeah, Jack school was, yeah, that was my, that was my level. Yeah. <laughs> And then, and then just before just before the six o'clock news, you'd have um, the magic roundabout or, and things like that, didn't we? It's Florence. Oh, you, who says we haven't lived? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> TV, TV raised up. It's all right. Don't like yeah. turn off my um, mute. Mike, I want to know: Did you make your blood test appointment last week? Did I did indeed. Yeah. <laughs> I just ran the last hundred yards. Well done. That's really good. <laughs> I was uh, thinking when you were all talking about the TV, I sadly I have to go back further to the wireless and Dick Barton, special agent. And <laughs> so uh, wow. I'm way, way back uh, before you. What, 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 what year was that, Mike, that you're talking about there? Yeah, I'm talking about 53, 4, 5. <laughs> really? Yeah. 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 Good. Somewhere there. I saw, I saw Glennis smirking at that, though, so maybe it... Yeah. She remembers. <laughs> <laughs> what about Jenny into space? Pardon? Jenny into space? Journey oh, yeah, I remember watching that. Yeah. 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 And I used to love listening on an on a, at the radio on a Saturday morning. And they used I can't I can't remember what it was now, but they always every week used to have there was an old lady who swallowed a fly. I don't know why she swallowed a fly. And they used to have this chap sing it and he sang that song every week. Oh, <laughs> I'm presuming it was recorded and they didn't get him in every Saturday to sing it, but oh. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Uncle, Uncle Mac. Mac. It was Uncle Mac and children's favourites. Is that what it was? What about the clangers? Was the clangers sort of your time or not? They would have been later. Have been yeah, later. I think that's yeah, well you you know that we said you're not on the same wavelength. Area. No, it's no, I, I think my just, would that be my children? My my kids are forty in their forties now, so yeah, that's probably yeah, they, their they, time, I would yeah, think. Yeah, they probably would have had they had the clap, the clangers, yeah, and, and 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 the wombles they would have had as well. Oh, I loved the wombles. Mm. Oh, mm. I loved them. So uh, we've got, I think we've got like quite uh, like everyone who was going to join us, and we've got, we've had some apologies from people as well. So. Um, Maybe we can ask people around what's your highlights if we haven't already because I joined a little bit later. That's our kind of like weekly routine. We're asking people what's your highlights and how are, how are you doing, guys? So if I can ask from um, the per first person in, on, my, on my left, which is Kathleen. Hello, Kathleen. Well, hello. <laughs> hello. Um, nice to see you. Thank you. And you too. Um, and, and not a highlight, more of an accomplishment. I've been renewing some contracts and renewing my broadband. Um, it's like pull teeth. And I finally renewed my broadband and got a good deal. But the others are still hanging out there. So not exactly a highlight, just a relief that it's, I've done it. Brilliant, that's great, well done. And uh, I'm really sorry I haven't replied to your message, uh, to your email, but I believe Harry has from the last week when you sent apologies. I, I saw it, but I was really, oh. in, I saw Harry just replied back, so I thought, okay, um, at least yeah. you've got some communication from us as well. Yeah, I guess that's a highlight that the builders next door have stopped banging 24 hours a day on the walls. So. Okay, that's good. That's good. <laughs> yes, that, uh, that is. Uh, who did you go with, with your broadband? I went with EE. 
Mm -hmm. okay. A fiber, fiber optic, yeah. So, so have, you not, have you got the new provider provider already, or is are you tomorrow. waiting? Going live tomorrow. All right. So we'll see next week. Maybe you will be like flashing or everything. I have no idea. <laughs> new horizon. Thank you, Kathleen. I've got Audrey next to Kathleen. Hello, Audrey. This is the first time actually we meet. I'm not sure if you've seen if you joined our sessions before when I wasn't at, at the Zoom meetings, maybe Harry was. But it's nice to see you. So welcome to the group. It's very friendly, positive, happy, chatty <laughs> group. So please tell, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from and any highlights you've had since, I don't know, the last week, maybe? Yeah, um, well, I'm actually in Kent and uh, um, my claim to fame is that my daughter, Sasha, she works in your area as a yeah. volunteer, Sasha Turkey. So, so she thought it would be good if I joined, you know, last week, I'm afraid I wasn't too well, but this week I've, I've got the go ahead. I've been waiting for two years for a hip operation. So next Wednesday, I'm afraid I'm going to be out of the picture because that's when my operation is. So, oh, so do, you know, do you know which hospital you're going to be at? Um, it's going to be in Margate in Kent. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. That's why you're in Kent already. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we wish you all good luck for the operation. And we, we, all, we also wish you speedy recovery after the operation because it takes some time sometimes to just yeah, I think, I think just following <clears throat> following the routine and keep doing the routine. That's what I've I've learned from other people. Yeah, you know, that's good. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But don't you worry, we're recording our sessions, so we can send you the link. You can watch us later on, and we can even we can guys. Can we remember next week to say hello to Audrey by the <laughs> end of the session, so you we can cheer you up this way as well. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. Thank you, Audrey. And we've got lovely, lovely Tovi next to Audrey. Hello, Tovi. How are you doing? Oh, not very well. No way. Bored. Is it because of the COVID restrictions still? Listening to the news and falling asleep. <sighs> oh. Oh. Yeah. How do you how, how do you spend your day? Is it Tov or Tovi? Tovi? Tova. Tova. How, how, how are you spending your days, Tova? Mostly playing on a on a on the uh, computer. <laughs> Laptop. <laughs> were you able to meet with your family? Because last week you said you were struggling because of the six restrictions to to have, have you been in we're not allowed to meet, are we? So, what about your 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 sons? And are they coming just to visit you sometimes? Yeah. See them come and go. Okay. What do you play, what do you play on the computer, Toby? I play Hey Day. Hey Day. Hey Day. Do you know it? I don't. What is it? Well, it's a farm. Okay. Oh. Uh, hey, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. It, do you play against people or with people? No. No, just for myself. Okay. I don't know if any. I don't know if you can play against people on that. Hmm. Is it addictive? I, it is, perhaps. But Tove, Tove, maybe we can um, think of any activities uh, you can. Enjoy as well. Maybe we can create a little, not only for you, but for other people as well. Uh, maybe we can think of some activities or resources we can we can post you or send send emails so you can maybe have a choice of other things, not to feel so bored as well. Sometimes would that be helpful? <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Just thinking. <laughs> Aggie, yes. one of, Aggie, one of the things that we've, we've produced that I'd uh, be happy to send out to anybody if they'd like one is that we've produced like an act for people who have been in lockdown or a little bit of isolation as well. We've produced a, an activity book, um, uh, mm -hmm. which has got things like little quizzes. It's got lots of little things in it as well. And 
and, and, and even doing something like this, we could have an online quiz as well, like a little pub quiz and, 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 and bring back little, little topics from, from, from years gone by and see how much we can all recollect on it as well. That's really great, Mark. But uh, I, 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 organize, I organize sort of uh, um, uh, Zoom quizzes and things as well. But, we, but I, I can give you details at the end after my talk if, you, if anybody's interested in the activity book and we can get those sent out to people as well. That will be great. I, I'm happy to get, uh, you know, to um, organize the um, mailing posting okay. list. And Lovely. if you send us uh, those booklets to our office, we organize all the, you know, great. the send yeah. out. And we've, we've produced them and they're all, they're all free. So we just, we're just getting them out to people. And it, it just helps with that little bit of boredom for people if they're, uh, and, it's got you, and it's got useful phone numbers in it as well for, um, uh, you know, the Devon County Council, doctors, surgeries and pharmacies and th things around as well that people. Oh, so that's use. really, really good. Yeah. So, yes, thank you. That would be lovely, Mark. That I think um, lots of our participants, not only Zoom participants, but we also have one to one like online uh, yeah. sort of phone uh, calls, uh, uh, connections with other participants. So definitely something yeah. we would love to. Yeah, but what we we could we could we could organise a nineteen forties, fifties, and sixties quiz as well. Mm. <laughs> We've been doing some quizzes, so we yeah. you know you're more than welcome to do something for us as well. Yeah, I'd love to. Be good. Be good to get involved with you on that. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I just need to warn you that some of our quizzes are very crazy quizzes. We like we laugh a lot, and we they're like. <laughs> That's, good. That's good. Stella can say something about it already. <laughs> We don't tend to take anything seriously, and if we get a question right, it gets a little bit chaotic. So, and, um, <laughs> and I, yeah, and like I've, I've, I still have two prices for my people to send them to, and I haven't done so. It's like so crazy. <laughs> like they know who they are. One of them is here with us, <laughs> the meeting. But anyway, thank you. So I've got Krisha next to uh, Toby. How are you, Krisha? What's your highlight, and how are you doing? Um, well, I've been um, doing a lot of communication with my GP practice because there's been changes now mm -hmm. um, and just generally going through items which I have found more obstructive than helpful to the patient. So I have expressed my opinion to my GP um today and she's taking it on board mm -hmm. because what can happen is that staff in a doctor's surgery for example pharmacy they can be very um protective and jump to conclusions which are incorrect so um, we had a chat and um, i'm now going to get more stuff coming my way rather than they thought I could have. So it's good if you have any queries with your GP um, about, say, a member of staff, speak to your GP first, see how it will go. Mm -hmm. It does help. Is so, that a little bumblebee in your background? I can hear she yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> she's wearing bumblebee costume. Yeah, no, she's pretending she's, wee, she's bee. You see? No. <laughs> Yeah, I'm happy to show you her a little bit more. She's so happy. She's had a jab, flu jab yesterday. But <laughs> I think you look lovely. I know. She's lovely. But obviously, yeah, she's watching some cartoons, which I'm not really happy about. But let's say just for this hour, she's oh, like, I'm fine. fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Krisha, for, for sharing your your high, your you know your story as well. And I hope this you know this made you feel happier and more uh, like better. better. Yeah. Yeah. Less less stress. Yes. yes. That's good. That's good. Yes, I I would say to anyone who's older, speak up for yourself. Um, if you've got any concerns, just do that. It will really help to get it off your chest, so to speak, and for them to understand where they could be going wrong. Yeah. So, uh, never be afraid. 
Eric has been sitting here. Oh, hi, Eric. Hello. You all right? How are you doing? Sleeping. Sleeping, okay. It's nice to rest. Um, how about yourself, Mike? How's your week been? Um, fairly quiet, trying to dodge the virus and um, um, having moved into this sheltered accommodation about a month or so ago, um uh, trying to wait for the uh, decorating lady to arrive to uh, redecorate the flat but um, uh this is devon and manana and um uh, it's sort of uh, uh, manana i like this one <laughs> it'll happen if i live long enough i think so uh, uh yeah it's um uh, really a waiting game uh, for me at the moment and um trying to readjust to the loss of my wife uh, reference the um suddenly i'm in charge of things like uh, cooking and washing up and uh, um all these mundane things that uh, i've never experienced before as i've been looked after too well for um, many many years so um uh, comes a bit of a shock to the system uh, trying to reorganize mentally um mm -hmm. certainly with the cooking then uh, oh my goodness uh, it's a question of how far away is the fire brigade at the moment i think so. yeah, how's it going? <laughs> what, what, have you, what have you made mike I'm, I'm <laughs> did you say made or attempt <laughs> yeah what did you attempt <laughs> um well uh, it's um trying to uh, sort out uh, a casserole um uh, and organize that but um uh, i i think probably um uh, morrisons and uh, other supermarkets are likely to do well out of um uh, ready meals uh, for me sadly though uh, i don't think uh, i was uh, uh, supposed to be in the chef department uh, um, yeah, it just takes some it just takes some failure to fail before you get it <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I tell you what, uh, Mike. Have you have you got a slow cooker? At all? I have. I have for the casserole. Yeah. Is yeah, it? and uh, it it works quite well. The problem is the chef, not the cooker. Yeah. And um, <laughs> and uh, uh, sort of mixing the right ingredients would be a good start. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, that certainly helps. Yeah, that helps, Mike. Yeah. So. Uh, um yeah it's uh, uh, a little bit of a nightmare this cooking business but um uh if you could see me then you can you would know i wasn't starving by any manner or uh, <laughs> means so uh, the weight uh, is still there to uh, uh prove that bread and potatoes have still been uh, eaten to keep the uh, uh level up mm. but, uh, yeah it's um and, and as I mentioned last week, um, probably one of the biggest problems to adapt to is loneliness, which, um, of course, uh, millions of people throughout the country are um, in that predicament anyway. But it's um, it's a new thing to me, which is taking some readjusting. Mm -hmm. uh, hence, uh, we join in the uh, group to have some social intercurrence. Yeah, well, this is... Um, the, uh, Thank you, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. It's nice to have met you, Mike. I'm glad you did join. Yes, it, um, I was pointed in the direction by um, the local NHS community uh, nurse. And, um, oh, that's good. Uh, and um, uh, she spoke to uh, Harry, I think, and uh, or emailed Harry, and um, I trotted along uh, behind. And please, please, I did so. Good. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Mike. Thank you for, for, for telling us about, about our, yourself as well and the route you came to us as well. We've got Sue next to Mike. How are you, Sue? How are you doing and what's your highlights? Sue Krelin? Yeah, oh, Sue, me. Um, I haven't done much this week. Uh, I had a flare-up of my post-polio syndrome, so I didn't do 
much. Um, but my highlight was on Saturday, I went and had my flu jab and it was a drive through one. Oh, yeah. You stayed in the car, uh, it was very well organised and they did it in the car. You just opened the window, gave them the letter and they did it. So mm -hmm. it was quite good. Well, did you get like a nasal spray or what was it? Like, or injection? Uh, an injection. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was very good. They took over one of the car parks um, at the mayor in Exmouth and you just drove in. They told you which bay to go to. A nurse was waiting there. You handed over the letter and there was two of us in the car. They did both of us and that was it. You didn't get out the car. It, it, was, it was good. That's great. Say he's going to a surgery. Mm. It saves going to a surgery that's full with people with germs. Did you have far to go? No, um, about five minutes in the car. That's well, really that's good. That's yeah. really good, yeah. And where was yeah. that? Yeah. Exmouth. Exmouth. That's yeah. Exmouth. Thank you, Sue. And we've got Glennis next to Sue. Uh, well, the highlight of my week was definitely on Sunday. Uh, it was a beautiful day, as we've already covered, uh, and it was seeing the Queen Mary, the Azura, mm. and the uh, Zentura, I think it was Zentura, sorry. And, uh, I found it very thrilling for me. Yeah. And um, we had a meal at the cafe above the funicular, so we had a look, beautiful view of it, and then had a walk and saw it again and again. <laughs> it was lovely. Really yes. Well, I was just saying the other day, uh, when I was young, um, I was about 14, maybe 15, and we came down to Torquay, because I'm from Yorkshire, and um, my dad and I had a walk before breakfast, uh, up, up a, quite a hill, sat on a seat there, and you could see out to sea a little, and uh, the first Queen Mary went past, so my dad was thrilled to bits, and I noticed she had three funnels, and uh, that was an enjoyable, it brought it back to me the other day, seeing the Queen Mary too. Yeah. So that was a highlight, definitely, of my week. <laughs> oh, fantastic. fantastic. Mm -hmm. It was, it was lovely. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you, Glennis. Thank you so much, that's really lovely. And I've got Lise next to Glennies. Hello, Lise. How are you doing? What's your Hi. highlight? Hi. Yeah. Hi, Elizabeth. Yeah. Um, I was saying to the group before you joined us, Aggie, that I thought that I was supposed to be running the um, poetry writing thing this afternoon. And I, actually, I did plan the lesson, but I'd, I'd written to you twice and I haven't had a, you know, response and I was worried that you were ill or something. Oh, so sorry. I left you a voice message because I saw your tag. I saw oh. your email. After I've I said... never listened to the voice, voice messages. Oh. I never listened to them. <laughs> sorry. I've, I've left you a couple of voice messages because I was worried that you don't get my messages as well. Right. Because um, I thought you will be in Wales. No, I was in, in Wales last, last week. I oh, I didn't know. Monday, what... oh, I sent okay. an email saying I gave the dates, but you didn't answer. But oh, really? It doesn't matter because, you know, I can do it next, next week. It's just that, you know, I was a little bit muddled about it. Oh, I'm so sorry for this miscommunication. If I wouldn't have known, we would schedule the session with you for, for like this week. And Ma, I'm sure Mike wouldn't mind to do the following week but I wasn't sure if you will be in Wales or not and I left you a voice yeah. message just after I well, sent it out an email. Just as well because I've been rather um you know poorly and I'm still feeling a bit off so perhaps next next week I'll be back on form if that's if I can be back on. Um, so shall we talk about it later on because we've got some schedules already so maybe we can pick up the right date. Is that, oh, is that right, okay. okay yeah Okay, well, thank you. So, are you saying that you don't don't want want me to do it next next week? 
Um, because we uh, let's talk about it later. I will call you. Is that okay? So we can discuss okay. it further. Okay. Right. Okay. Fine. Okay. Thank you. So who else we've got left? We've got Mark and Harry. How are you, Mark? Any highlights? And maybe you can tell a little bit about yourself as well, so we can start the session with you. Oh, you know? Okay. Um, no, yeah, Mark, Mark McGlade, um, and I'm the Managing Director of Home Instead Senior Care, um, and I live in Budley, Budley Salterton, and we, I've got a, um, a company, and we support, um, we support mainly older people, but anybody from 18 over, but uh, the majority are retired, um, and provide a lot of support services for people so they can remain in their own home. So I've got about 130 uh, staff who work in uh, the extra and East Devon area, but we've also got other offices in North Devon and Torquay and now West Devon, uh, around Devon and around the country. But we, um, but we, we offer a very different type of, a type of home care services. We don't do the short visits of 15, 30 minutes. It's always a minimum of one or two hours. Um, but it's very much a folk, everything from companionship to home help and personal care. So we support people so that they can live in their own homes rather than going into a care home. Uh, but we won the award for the top quality care provider in the country. And we're the only care provider in the southwest of England rated five star outstanding by the Care Quality Commission. Well done. And, um, so we've got a lovely... Um, so the CQC, the Care Quality Commission, uh, rate and give a, a rating to all health and care providers. Um, but we were really fortunate to be the only one. We're the only, we were the first to get rated outstanding. And then when they re-inspected us, they found us outstanding in every single area of inspection. Wow. And, out, and out of 22,000 wow. care providers yeah. in the country, there's only nine with a five-star rating. Wow. So we, and we're the, we're the only ones in the Southwest. We're also the, we, we're, we're the only health or care provider ever to have received the Queen's Award from Buckingham Palace as well. Wow. So, You're uh, doing something amazing. pretty, pretty good. Well, well, it's interesting, Harry, because, you know, have a guess. What, what do you think is the average time of a home care visit in the UK? Oh, it's horrible. I've seen some of this stuff. It's not... Yeah. Um, you mean like from the family, like family uh, visiting? No, no when a, if, if, if you have a carer come to visit you and they do a visit to maybe provide help with washing, bathing, dressing or medications or in an, once you know, a day, once a day, once a day, it could be once a day, it could be two or three times a day, whatever people want. But the, the average time of a home care visit in the UK is 18 minutes. Oh. 18. Yeah, well, I was going to say 20 minutes. Well, so you're, very, you're very, very good, Liz. I was, actually, good. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say 15 because yeah. some of my friends, Polish friends, they used to still work at the care provider like yeah. services in Tivital, yeah. and sometimes they were so upset because they had only 10 minutes to visit someone, yeah. and they were saying it's not enough. Uh, you're absolutely right, and uh, say the average time is 18. So some visits are 10 minutes, some visits are 20, and some are 30. But that 18 minutes is the time that's often allocated to get help somebody get up out of bed, washed, bathed, showered, dressed and breakfast. No. I couldn't do it. I can't do it in that time. So what is that experience like for, for a frailer person? But what we do is that my wife and I, who, when we set up Home Instead here, and we've been running for nine years now, but we founded it on a very, very different model of care. Um, and at, we, we look upon this, that if the care we provide is not good enough for our own mum or dad, then it's not good enough for somebody else's. And I, and I wouldn't go and visit my own mum or dad for 15 to 20 minutes. So why would I visit somebody else? So, uh, and, and that's really because we hire, we, we, when we hire our carers, our caregivers, they, they, we train them and support them to go in and spend time and engage. And we, we, we actually match all of our clients with caregivers around their interests and hobbies and life experiences um, to really, and that makes a difference. I, I can tell you a quick story because we, we actually had where, where we match somebody and it worked out lovely. We had a, a client who came to us who wanted, um, it was a family, um, the son and daughter came to us and said that their mother had passed away and that dad was at home and he was 94 years old 
but he wasn't doing very well by himself because he'd been married for well over 60 years and he'd lost mm. a partner for his lifelong partner for, you know, for, for all that time. And he was going downhill a bit himself. But when we went round to meet with him, we found out that he was a former athlete for Great Britain in the 1948 Olympic Games mm. in London. He was a long distance runner and he'd won a medal. So we matched him with one of our caregivers who was training for a marathon. <laughs> Every morning she goes out running. He now gets in his mobility scooter with a stopwatch. He rides alongside her and he's training the girl. <laughs> she, goes, she, she then goes back to his flat. She does all his housekeeping, gets his meal ready for him, cooks him a meal, does all his medication, but it's given him a reason to get up in the morning. And I think that's one of the things that I think we all need is we all need a reason to get up in the morning. Yes. And, and his family yeah, came yeah. back to us and said, thank you. You've given oh, us our dad back. And, and that to me is just, it's not what we do. It's why we do it that makes the difference. And, uh, and I think giving people that luxury of having some extra time and when our carers turn up at somebody's house, they, they're not rushed. We, we, we don't stay. We, we, we never vi do any visit for less than one or two hours. And when our carers turn up and knock at the door, it's what would you like to do today? And if, so, if it's a nice day and they want to go out for a walk or a drive or go to the seafront and have a coffee or go to a garden centre, that's what we do. Mark, what about maybe you can introduce our sessions to your... Love uh, to. Yeah, people. absolutely. Maybe they would like to join us and we could say, have a conversation with, with your clients as well, just yeah. to... Yeah. Yeah, well, no, we, we, yeah, we do some fantastic things. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. That would be nice. We can we can we can have a conversation around that later on as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. We've got like fifteen minutes left, but maybe we can do a little. If everyone's okay, well, maybe we can extend it like ten minutes more, so you feel confident, Mark, to delivering the session to us about the in like online scams. Yeah. Well, would you like me to to run into a bit of this now for you? And yes, please. Yeah. That would be really nice. What I can what I can do is if I've got screen share, I can put a little presentation up and talk you through it. Yeah. Okay. Let me do that and see what we can do here. Thank so you. If I've got. Uh, bear with me one second. How are you okay? Because I haven't asked you about your highlights. I'm so I sorry. I made some cookies. <laughs> oh. I made, I made carrot cake cookies yesterday, so that's my highlight. They were great. Got, well done. I've still got a few left. So uh, you'll have to give the recipe to Mike. Yeah, actually, it's very easy. <laughs> Send it cooked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know whether any of you can see it. Can it, yes, can, yeah, can. Is it we can on see. Now? You, you can need see to it? just make it bigger. So yeah, that's how's that? Yep. Yeah. Well, this is me, and I uh, say so I'm the uh, managing director at Home Instead. And what we what we've done, we we operate right across the UK now, um, with a very different model of care. It's very companionship led and um, uh, uh, focus on care. And I mentioned a little bit about the Care Quality Commission, but we we also we partnered with the police a few years ago because of um, scams, um, and because we operate right across the UK we're able to pick up on some of the scams that are going on and, and, and share that um, across with, with, with our clients and with older people. And I, I go out across Devon and I give talks on scams. I've partnered with the, with the police in, in, in East Devon who often use me to go out and, and give talks, talk, talks on some of the scams and particularly things like internet scams and things as well and phone scams. And I'll, I'll rush through, go, go through some of this. But what, we've, what I've produced, Aggie, we've, we've also got what's called a fraud, a senior fraud protection kit, which talks about scams and how you can protect yourself against it. I've got it electronically. I'll email that to you, Aggie, as well. And maybe you could, if you'd like to share that with anybody on here as well. And it gives you top tips on how to protect yourself against the phone scams, email scams, and so on as well. And you can share that amongst your friends and neighbors as well. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Mark. I think this is really useful resources for, for yeah. everyone, not, not even to our group, but. Absolutely. Everyone. Absolutely. And we've got a lot of resources like this that we can share with you and make it freely available for you, Aggie, and your, and your Thank groups. You. Perfect. Oh, Thank um, you. Let me just go on to the next one here. Okay. Still there. Yep. So, so let me just go into this one. So we're going to go on to um, 
So we talked a little bit about, yeah, we, we are supporting people right across the country. Our mission is to, um, we want to prevent older people from losing the assets, obviously, and independence and trust. And some of these scams can be absolutely horrific. You know, not only is there a financial um, implication to this, but it also affects, affects people's mental um, well-being as well. So we're raising awareness. What we're doing at the moment is raising awareness of these scams and informing people about the, this fraud. And I'll, I'll, I'll be running through the different types of fraud, but also what the implications of that can be. Can be. And, and really what we're, we want to do is to ensure that older people can live and remain living independently in their own home for as long as possible. Um, and, you know, the... the we, we know that care homes and they've had a pretty bad rap, haven't they, for, for in, in the last few months with COVID as well. So if we can keep people living in their own home very safely, then, uh, then surely that's uh, where most people would rather be, then that's, that can't be a bad thing. We are committed to fighting, fighting fraud. We, uh, we've got a lot of e-learning programs that you can, we can make available to you on the internet as well. We offer um, this toolkit, which I can send out to you all and we're providing a lot of information and useful resources on our website against it as well. And we're high, as, we, as we're learning of new, new scams from around the world, we're, we're making people and the police aware of them um, so that we can put in some measures um, to prevent them. We're ideally placed because we employ over 9,000, across the country, we employ over 9,000 caregivers. And they're not volunteers, they are employed. Um, we're providing really good employment. We've um, we've won we've won the five star uh, care care employment award as well for offering really good. Um, uh, and one of our missions is to raise raise awareness of care to try and professionalise care um, to give it a similar status as like nursing as well. Because often a lot of carers they don't they're off a, a lot of carers are on minimum wage. We don't our caregivers are well above minimum wage and we provide a huge amount of training and resources because we want to professionalize that caring profession. Um, we're ideally placed uh, because we do operate across the country and we have partnered with the police, we've partnered with uh, uh, a number of organizations which I'll touch on, touch on now. So people like the National Trading Standards have partnered with Home Instead. Think Jessica is a charity um, founded by a lady that uh, Mar Marilyn Baldwin and her mother was scammed and lost her life savings. Well over 40,000 pounds, her life savings were lost to scammers. I personally have worked with uh, a number of people in Devon, um, in Sidmouth um, and Exmouth uh, who have lost their whole life savings to scammers. Um, and uh, I'll touch on, touch on some of the scams that they're using. A little bit of background to fraud. Um, the Citizen Vice research shows that almost three quarters, 72% of older people surveyed had been targeted by scammers. I've been targeted. I'm sure it's not just older people, but a lot of people have been targeted by, uh, by these scammers. Um, and over a third of people have been targeted more than five times. The latest figures um, from the crime survey in England and Wales from a couple of years ago showed that there's a 7% increase in the number of fraud offences um, in England and Wales. That was over 660,000 compared with the previous year. And it continues to grow every year. Um, increase in um, a lot of those offences is going up by about 18% year on year. The mass market scams include the use of internet, phone and post and makes up the largest portion of fraud and it's costing us as individuals between five and ten billion pounds a year that's how much we're being scammed five to ten billion pounds over half of people aged 65 and over uh, believe that they have been a target of a scam so why are older people being targeted by these scammers um, a lot of it is um, isolation and loneliness um, a lot of people who are, who are isolated or living alone, they may not get to see or have those phone calls every day. So when somebody gets on the phone and there's a friendly voice on the end of the phone, of course, we're attracted to that and we just like to talk to somebody. And these scammers are usually very, very clever. They understand that there's a lot of loneliness out there and they, their mission is to try and befriend you, to try and get close to you and then try and remove your money from you. That's ultimately what they want to do. 
they're they're evil people. Um, now we live in, living in Devon. We're living in one of the safest parts of the country uh, re regarding crime. This is a very safe part of the country to live in. You know, the big we're not in a big city, um, but the scammers that we're talking about don't necessarily live in Devon. They can live in London, they can live in Liverpool or Manchester, but they can also live in South Africa, in Russia, in South, in South America. They can live anywhere in the world now. And it's out, out of reach of the police. So our police don't necessarily have the ability to, to get these people because with the internet and the phone, they can be any part of the world. And often they are. But they're... They're, they're targeting anybody who, who, who might be a little bit more vulnerable. There's financial stability. Now, that's not to say that everybody who's retired and older people have money. That's not the case at all. But generally, older people are not working. They, they have a pension. They are retired. Uh, but they, they may have their savings that they've worked hard all their lives. But that's, got, that, that's their little nest egg to keep them going for the rest of their lives. But those scammers, they don't care about that. They just want to depart you that money from you. So this is why we have to take extra precautions regarding protecting the most vulnerable. Poor health can often be a reason why people are targeted because the scammers will often put out little messages that they can actually help those little aches and pains. They've got medications that can, um, tablets and creams and things that you can use um, that will that will help help relieve some of those poor, poor health conditions. And that may mean that you've got to spend a little bit of money on that. But um, for instance, I, a, a year or so ago, a lady that we were supporting, she, she showed me some medication patches, the, these uh, pain patches that she, she, and she was paying 60 pounds a month for these pain patches, which she'd, which, which had been offered to her by, via um, a newsletter that came through her door. And when I looked at these pain patches, I told her they were fake. And she said, well, how do you know they're fake? Because when you read the label on them, they couldn't even spell the word patches. It was, it, the spelling on it was, you know, it, it's probably been made in Nigeria or China or somewhere. But the danger of this is that when you buy these things on the internet and you're buying these things that you don't know where they've come from, it, in, in the worst case or the best case, it could be that there's just water in these patches. But there could also be chemicals in these patches that could interfere with your other medications. So the bottom line is don't ever buy any of these medications online unless you consult your doctor because you just do not know what is in them. And also it's costing you a lot of money. Um, and, but there could be chemicals in these that could actually um, do you a lot of harm as well. Um, fastest growing segment of the population is the elderly. Um, it, it, the over 65s represent about 16 and a half percent of the UK population. 16 and a half percent of the population of the UK is over 65. In Devon, it's 24 percent. So we're already 50 percent higher than the rest of the UK. Um, but in parts of, in certain parts of Devon, certainly where I am in, in East Devon and in Budley Salterton and look like Sidmouth, you've got 40 percent of the population over the age of 65. And the over 65s is, 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 are going to double in the next 30 years. So the rest of the UK is going to look like Sidmouth in the next, in, 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 you know, we've got an old, a growing elderly population. So the over 65s, although we're 20, you know, 24 percent now, it's going to be 40 to 50 percent of Devon population will be over the age of 65 in about 25 years time. Um, often with aging population, we, we have a declining cognitive function. Um, there are 850,000 people living with dementia in the UK. And 850,000 is the, is, is the, is the, is the uh, population of Devon. So if you think of the population of Devon, that's how many people in the UK are living with dementia. And that number is going to double over the next 20 years as well. And with, with increasing cognitive decline, if people are losing some of their short-term memory, then they can also be targets for people, these scammers. Because, and I've, I've come across scam, I've come across some scam um, targets where they get you to sign up direct debits to charities, 
but they've got about 15 or 16 direct debits going out all to the same bogus charity every month because they can't remember that they've already got another direct debit set up. So be very, very careful. Of, and we'll talk a little bit about some bogus charities as well. I'm going to touch on that. So some of the common scams. Um, we're, we're all speaking today and we're all on our computers. Um, now, obviously the computer is the hardware, but what makes that computer operate is the software that is in that computer. Um, and that is the computer programming in there. Now, Microsoft is the biggest software provider out there that if you, if, unless you've got a Mac, uh, a Mac computer, but if you've got a PC based computer, then you'll have Microsoft software in your computer. Now, because we can all, as we're on a computer right now, we're all speaking to each other and can see each other because we're on a network. And when we go and search on Google or we search for things where we, we leave our computer and we go onto the internet and we go and retrieve that computer, we go and retrieve that information from big databases all around the world uh, where, where that information is stored. So we're all on a big network. But as we can leave our computer and go in and retrieve that information from another big database, it makes sense that if we, can, if we can access another big computer, then it's possible for the other computer to come onto you and access information that's on your computer in your, in your living room, because we're all networked. So as you can get information from Google, these clever people sitting at home can go through the internet and unless you've got protection on your computer um, to stop them getting in, they could access your computer and start getting passwords and so on, or, or bank information. So that's why you have to have the appropriate software on your computer that stops them getting access to your computer. Now, Microsoft, uh, um, because they're the big computer um, software company, a big, a big fraud at the moment and a big um, scam is for someone to phone you and tell you that they are from Microsoft and that you have a problem with your computer and it needs to have protection put on it. Well, already, I mean, the big, the big thing that scammers will do is often get you worried because as soon as you're worried, your guard goes down. So any scammer that phones you or emails you, 99% of the time, they're gonna tell you you've got a problem and they're gonna get you worried and they're there to help you. So, so now what they want to do is get you to trust them because they're going to help fix your problem. But if anyone phones you and tells you that you've got a problem or they email and tell you you've got a problem, a red flag should go up and 99.9% .9 of the time it's a scam. Because anyone who's genuine would not phone you out of the blue like that or would not email you out of the blue you know, your bank net would never phone you, your insurance company, they're going to, they're going to send you a letter or they're going to go through a certain, they're going to go through certain precautions. They're not just going to come, want to come on your computer. But what these scammers do is they phone you and tell you, you've got a problem with your computer. It needs the appropriate software put on your computer to protect you against these scammers. So they're telling you that they're there to help you against scammers. And by giving them access to your computer, they will put the software on your computer to give you the up-to-date protection. And because you're worried that you don't want to lose your passwords and lose your information, you give them access and you can give them access to your computer and then they go on onto your computer remotely. They don't have to come in your home. They can go on remotely if you give them permission. But instead of giving you the protection that you need, they actually put little virus, um, uh, embed virus software into your computer that goes looking for all your passwords and all your personal contact information and they suck it off down the internet. So the way to avoid this, if any, anybody ever phones you and said they're from Microsoft and they're there to help you, put the phone down. Don't trust them, it's a scam. Fake charities, we have a massive, um, uh, a massive uh, rise in fake charities. I mean, Britain, the British people are one of the most generous nations on earth in terms of the amount of money per person that we give to charities. 
Yet when we give money to charity, how many actually, how many of us actually check that that charity is registered with the Charities Commission? A lot of charities, you know, people are phoning you now. They're asking that they, they can save, that save the world. They can save children in Africa. All you've got to do is put, give five pound a week and you can save and help people in Africa with, who are starving or need water. And, and they will just set up a direct debit with from your bank account directly to these charities. Over 50% of them are fake. Just be very careful about signing up and, and then they, 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 now you've given them access to your bank account and direct debits. Now, how many of us are sitting at home and we get the phone call just as we're sitting down for tea or dinner and it's you know an insurance company, it's somebody selling double glazing and these sorts of things as well. Well, this is why the phone companies will have, have set up TPS, which is a telephone preference service that you can register, register for, which um, kind, kind of can block block these phone calls coming in uh, when you don't want them. Now, telephone preference service is free. You don't pay any money to sign up for this. But there is a common scam coming out that people are phoning up saying they're claiming to be from the telephone preference service and they're asking for your credit card details so that you can continue to have the service. And you give them your credit card or you give them a debit card because you don't want these scammers calling you. But these, this is a scam itself. You should never pay for telephone preference service. But if you, if you don't want those phone calls coming in, contact your phone provider, tell them that you'd like to register for it. And then they will, they, they will um, kind of block out a lot of these calls. But if you continue to get sales calls or calls in the evening and you are registered on the telephone service, then the chances are it's a scam anyway, because these illegal fraudsters and these scammers will not apply, apply, you know, comply with the law, even though the law says they shouldn't be calling you, they'll just call you anyway. So the chances are it's a scammer. Um, another common one is pay up an answer phone message is left for you. Uh, you get an answer phone message claiming that you are a suspect of a crime and your and if your lawyer doesn't ring back then they'll be calling the police now obviously a lot of older people the majority of older people they don't want to get in trouble with solicitors they don't want to get in trouble with the police um, but it could be that you've been involved in an accident you've been your, your car has hit someone else but if you don't pay up the police are going to get involved and this often worries a lot of older people and they'd rather just pay the money um, than get involved with the police this is a scam it's too good to be true. I've, had, I've received this email uh, a few times where a letter arrives or an email arrives telling you that um, you've won. In fact, I had the email that said someone with my name, McGlade, in the middle of China had died and left a $10 million, $10 million um, fortune. Um, and that the, the, it, these were lawyers in China that could help me get that money because they believed I was the next, next of kin. I didn't realize that and, uh, obviously I had a long lost relative living in the middle of China. Um, and, um, but but they, there's $10 million sitting there and all I needed to do was to give them my bank details and at the end of the month they would put, they, they'll take $5 million and they'll put $5 million into my bank account. Well, people are signing up to this, and when they check at the end of the month, no money's gone in, but all their bank savings have gone out. And I think there's an old saying, isn't there? If it sounds too good to be true, yeah, it probably is. Um, there's a courier scam going about at the moment where you get a, a, a let, you receive a call, and they say they're from their bank, uh, from your bank, and it tells you that your bank card needs collecting because there's been some fraud on your bank card. Um, and there, your bank is going to reissue you another card. But a, but a, but a courier is gonna come down and personally collect your card from you and reissue, they'll reissue you another card. Well, you think, well, this is a really good service from NatWest or Lloyd's. Um, and, and somebody turns up at your house the next day and they ask you for your bank card. And when you give them your bank card, they flip it over, they've got, they, they take, 
take the card, they look at the pin number on the back of their card. So now they've got your card, your name and the pin number. They cut it up in front of you, but they've already got your pin number because they've looked at it on the back. And they say that a new card's going to be arriving by another courier that afternoon. Well, that courier never arrives. And when you check your bank account, you've probably rung up about 5,000 pounds of charges in Moscow or Rio de Janeiro. They've already taken the money from it. So never ever give your pin number or let anybody else see your pin number on your card. Because as soon as they've got your pin number, your name and, your, and the number, they can start using it to make transactions on it. So other scams are things like lottery and prize draws. Has anybody ever received these letters coming through that look like, you know, you could win or you have won 350,000 pounds and these sorts of things. And all you've got to do is sign up for pay, buying something and you're, not, you're going to win the big lottery and the big jackpot. Well, once you sign up for these sorts of letters, it keeps telling you that you're going to win all this money, but it, you never win any money. Um, and all they do is keep getting you to pay up for little gifts and, and all these sorts of things. It's another big scam. Um, but once get, they've got your name and once you re reply to these, then they start writing to you every week. They start emailing you, they start phoning you and a clairvoyant starts phoning you and telling you that keep paying this money because you're going to win the big jackpot at the end of the year It's a million pounds. You're going to win a million pounds. And they've got you thinking, well, what could I do with a million pounds? I could pay off the mortgage for my son or my daughter, pay the college and the university for my grandchildren but the money never comes. But more recently in the last year, these clairvoyants have started phoning older people, all these bogus clairvoyants, and telling them that if they stop paying the money, then evil things will happen to their children and grandchildren. And they're worrying people living at home alone. And now you're worried because they've got your name, they've got your phone number, they've got your email address, they know where you live. And it, it's driving a lot of uh, a lot of nasty um, nasty things around, but these are evil people. So the best thing is if you get, you know, if it sounds too good to be true, you're never going to win at these jackpots. You're never going to win the money. Uh, you 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 know, they tell you that you've won a prize. Well, how can you win a prize when you never even entered the competition? You know, the, the identity theft. Um, we know that there is identity theft is a is a big crime in this country right now we've only got to see what's going on every day on it every single day we've got two three four hundred people trying to cross the english channel to get into this country as illegal immigrants a lot of them want to get into this country and they they would love to have a national insurance number they'd love to have a social security number or whatever because then they can start claiming benefits and start you know getting an identity in this country so there is a big, huge market, a multi-million pound market of identity theft for illegal immigrants to come into this country. So things like your letters and, and your, your mail, a good op thing here is to make sure that if there's anything confidential on there, that you shred those letters and you destroy them properly because there is a big market for uh, trying to take over your identity. Um, re religious scams, uh, fake websites, there are betting scams. All kinds of internet scams going on at the moment um, that, that just be just be very very careful of. One one of the ones that is, is that is quite worrying at the moment is that you get a phone call and it says that it's, it's from your bank that there is some fraud on your bank card, and they ask you to verify who you are. Now, I've I've had I've had these phone calls. And I know my father's had them as well. Um, because you're worried that your card has been compromised, your, your credit card, or somebody may have had access to your credit card. But your bank will never, ever ask you. Your, your bank knows what your card number is. It's not going to ask you for your card number because it knows what it is. It's, your bank will never, ever ask you for your PIN number. That's confidential between you and it will never, nobody over the phone will ask you for that. So unless, I, the, the golden rule is unless you can put a face to the name of somebody who's calling you on the phone, don't give them any information because you don't know who they are. 
So, sorry, Mark, um, just to interrupt you there. Um, I think we probably have to start wrapping up, if that's all right. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you um, very much, Mark. Yeah, thank very you. interesting. But, 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 I had a phone call once from yeah. our broadband supplier and yeah. said um, it's not working and um, yeah, we need to put I, it right. Yeah, I, and I, if, if, it was your credit card. <laughs> absolutely. I was, that, that was one of the ones I was going to come on to. Yeah, that, that's a, another big one is that they're calling you, it's either Microsoft or it's your broadband provider. And don't ever, uh, and, uh, unless it is a phone call that you have initiated, like you're going to buy, you, you want to buy something from Tesco's or it's over the line. But if anyone ever phones you asking for your credit card details, do not give it. No, I don't. But it was a bit intimidating yeah. because they were saying it's not working. And as it's not working, you know, just, you need to pay just, us. Just put the phone down. That's what you said. Yeah, don't, Which don't, I did, I did. Don't, 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 don't engage in a phone. If somebody phones you and they want your credit card details, put the phone down. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. Thank, thank you, Mark. Well, thank you very much, but I'm going to have to go now. Um, Mark, thank you so much. for everybody. Thank you, Krisha. Does anyone else have any questions to Mark before we wrap it up? So maybe there will be a chance to, to have like a couple minutes minutes for answering. Does anyone have any questions? No, I'd just like to thank you, Mark. It's, I had an email from the TV license, well, it was meant to be from the TV license and people to say that I owed the TV license. Yeah. Money. It hadn't been taken out of my bank. And I nearly fell for it. And I re my sister was in hospital that handles all the money situation. And I nearly fell for it. And then I thought, well, something doesn't, yeah. you know, not true. And I didn't do anything. And I've had another one since. We know it's not true. Well, well, so, well, it, well obviously what's happened in the last two months, in the last two months, the uh, over 75s now have to pay for their TV license unless they get pension credits. Yeah. Well, I'm not over 75. I'm only, I'm yeah. early 70s. So I still, yeah. we still pay for our uh, Yeah. Licenses. So, yeah. So every, so where, 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 where it used to be that it, obviously when you retired, when you retired, you could get free TV license, free TV licenses when, once you were retired. But now it's, now it's, you can only get a free TV license if you are in receipt of pension credits. Mm -hmm. So, so about half, about half of, about half of um, over 65s will now have to pay for their TV license. No, 75, isn't it? Yeah, 75, yeah. Glad yeah. you avoided it, Sue. Yeah, it's sort of easy to fall for, isn't it? Yeah. So, so there are, so there yeah, are scam, scammers, so there are scammers now jumping in on the back, back of that, yeah. telling people, you know, sending out letters to tell them that they've got to pay this money, uh, but they're, they're giving false, false bank account details of where the money needs to be paid. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, would it be okay if you send me the, the presentation and I can forward that to particip or our participants so we can read it through because it's so interesting and unfortunately yeah. we, couldn't, we couldn't finish everything because we you know, we oh, absolutely. And what I what I do is I've got the what I can do is I've got it. I've got a toolkit which is a um, a, a PDF document, and, and you can share that with uh, with the team with everybody as well. That will be lovely. Um, so thank you so much, Mark. And I believe we see you next week as well when you I'm talk, talk to about us. nutrition next week, isn't it? Yes, we're talking about nutrition. Nutrition for nutrition for the elderly. Yeah. That's the, I think this is another interesting topic. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, it, it, it would be an absolute pleasure. Uh, we don't have time right now, but we usually ask each other what we've had for breakfast. So that will be definitely the question for the next session. Okay. Maybe at the beginning. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, it's been, it's been an absolute pleasure meeting everybody. And, uh, uh, and uh, I look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank, yes. you. Thank you, Mark. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Thank you, everyone, and see you next week. What, what, what I can offer yes. there, uh, Aggie, what, uh, what I can offer is uh, if you share, if you want to share my contact details, if anybody does want any, you know, uh, advice or signposting on those sorts of things as well, if you want to share, um, when I send you the information out with uh, with our phone number and email address, if anybody does want to contact, they can always feel free to contact me directly as well. Yes, that's really really helpful. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Very Thank you. you. Bye, Bye everyone. Good. Stay safe Bye. and happy. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye, Bye Stella. See you. Thanks, Sue.